Clever room. I shall make a brief statement, both in English and in Greek, and then I'll take... Do what? <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, take a couple of questions in English and a couple of questions in Greek. Yeah? Uh, right. Thank you all for coming. Today's Eurogroup meeting discussed the latest developments uh, on uh, Greece. We explained to my colleagues why we could not accept the institution's proposal two days ago. Briefly, it had to do with three fundamental issues. The first one was that the prior actions recommended were uh, seriously recessionary and redistributive, yet again redistributing burdens from those who, who could and should bear them to those who neither could nor should. The second reason concerned the financing. The proposal for financing the five-month extension period of the current uh, agreement, uh, the, the, pro the funding proposal that was on the table by the institutions, was technically inadequate. The numbers simply didn't add up. And when we asked questions about, the par in particular, the utilization of parts of the HFSF 10.9 billion, which was there in order to recapitalize banks and strengthen them in view of the problem with the NPLs, we received an answer that involved the ASM, and that, as we know, effectively baked into this short-term arrangement a new program. Both technically and legally, that m did not make much sense, and I'm sure that other member states would have a problem with it. Germany in particular. Thirdly, and most importantly, what was proposed to us did not contain any plan for giving, instilling hope in investors, both Greek and non-Greek, in consumers, in depositors, that this five-month period that was recommended, proposed to us, would be a period of consolidation and a period of overcoming the crisis. In Instead, it was punctuated by one review after the other every few weeks, leading to an end sometime in November, December, without anything in sight that instilled confidence in anyone that we wouldn't be in exactly the same negotiation, again with the threat of uh, impasse, uh, deterring through backward induction today investors from doing their, what Greece needs, uh, which is to invest. We explained that we didn't have a mandate on, to sign a non-viable, unsustainable proposal. At the same time, fully cognizant of the difficulties and the historic uh, moment that we find ourselves in, we determined as a government that we did not have the mandate to reject the institution's position either without consulting the people of Greece who will have to be the final arbiters of whether that proposal is accepted or not. I reminded my colleagues that we were elected uh, on the basis of a 36% vote to collectively our government um, scored something just over 40%. For a momentous decision like that, we believe that 50% plus one is the minimum that is necessary. We explained to our partners also that this government is uh, absolutely determined to find a solution and accommodation with our partners, that the Greek people on 5th July will be asked to agree or not to agree with the institution's proposal. That leaves open the possibility of negotiations through the night and the day and the night and the day ahead of us that would improve the institution's proposal, in which case our government's recommendation would change. Instead of recommending to the electors that they should vote against this agreement, we would then change to a yes vote recommendation. The real reason, ladies and gentlemen, why we're finding ourselves in this impasse is because our recommendation, our suggestion 
from the moment we were elected that we should try to find common ground between the existing memorandum of understanding and our government's priorities, which was very eloquently put forward by Michel Sapin, my French counterpart, from the very first Eurogroup I attended. The notion of establishing a common ground on which to build an agreement. That was um, confirmed not in the observance but in the breach. The 20th of February was a very good step in that direction. It didn't mention the MOU. It mentioned effectively the common ground that would be based on the proposals of the Greek government. But ever since the 20th of February, the other side, the institutions, unfortunately have been trying to drag us back into the MOU. We can have any agreement we want as long as it is the MOU, to paraphrase Henry Ford. And indeed, there was nothing, as I said before, in the package that was put to us that would remove the fear of Grexit, the deadline effect, therefore allowing the Greek economy to breathe. Let me say that the refusal of the Eurogroup today to endorse our request for an extension of this agreement for a few days, a couple of weeks, so as to allow the Greek people to deliver their verdict on the institution's proposal, especially given that there is a very high probability that Greeks will go against our recommendation and vote in favor of the institution's proposal. That refusal will certainly damage the cred credibility of the Eurogroup as a democratic union of partner member states, and I'm very much afraid that that damage will be permanent. Now I'm going to say more or less the same thing to the extent that I can in Greek. Lady, please. Your name, please. Uh, your name, please. Can you tell us your name, please? Your name. Well, this is a very interesting question. So I take it that Mr. Dijsselbloem would be happy with us implementing a proposal that we do not believe in if we don't have the verdict of the Greek people. But if we do have the verdict of the, people, the Greek people, there would be a problem. Let's be serious about this. Our government committed in no uncertain terms to implementing the verdict of the Greek people on Sunday. If the Greek people wanted us to sign on the dotted line, we would. Even if that meant having um, a government reshuffle or some other kind of configuration um, at the level of the government. Alexis Tsipras, the Prime Minister, and we, the negotiating, te negotiating team, committed to making sure that the Greek people retain sovereignty. We, have, you have to remember that, we are the agents the Greek people are the principals. They tell us what to do. If they tell us to sign, we will sign. Whatever it takes, to quote or misquote or paraphrase uh, Mario Draghi. On the question of credibility, this word is much abused in the Eurogroup of recent. It is true that the Greek government, Greek governments for many years, lacked credibility. But it is also true that the institutions and the Eurogroup lacks credibility in a country like Greece, where a, a, a memorandum of understanding of sorts has been imposed for five years, fiscal consolidation has been affected to the maximal degree, more fiscal consolidation in Greece than any place in the world during peacetime, and yet those programs have been quite clear failures. So it takes both sides to try to build credibility, and it would be I think a great contribution to Europe to stop recriminations and pointing fingers at one another. Are you going on to the Please. No, no, no. Hi.
Thank you so much. A very good question, if I may say. Um, on the first point, the institutions, after many months of deliberations and negotiations, came to us with a very comprehensive proposal as the Eurogroup statement, which we are not privy to, we were not signatories to, but nevertheless, of the 18, stated very clearly today. The institutions made a comprehensive proposal to us two days ago. This is the proposal that we are putting to the Greek people. But we, in the interests of maximum flexibility and in our determination to maximize the chances of an agreement, we're leaving this quite open. The question that we are putting to the Greek people is, do you believe, do you agree that we should sign on the dotted line of the proposal of the institutions? And the reason why I'm emphasizing this is, as I said before, we are leaving it open for that proposal to be improved, in which case, as I said, we would recommend acceptance by the Greek voters. So there is no ambiguity there. It's quite straightforward. We were asked to say yes or no to that proposal. And what we are doing now, as Democrats ought to do, is ask the Greek people to tell us whether we should say that yes or that no. On the second question, let me be very specifically, abundantly, unambiguously clear on this. Anyone who says that this referendum is about the euro is imposing a very shaky interpretation upon a very clear, clear uh, crystal clear reality. The reality is that it is not about the euro, and it could never be about the euro. Let me remind you, sir, that there are no provisions for exit from the monetary union. There are provisions, after the Lisbon Treaty, for exit from the European Union, but not from the euro. So any question put to the people of Greece or to any other people in the eurozone, euro or exit, would violate fundamental treaties of the European Union. Anybody who wants us to pose that question must first change the treaties of the European Union. We are putting a very simple question to our electorate. Do you want us to sign this particular agreement that was given to us or not? Thank you.